everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to the March 9th Nassau County Planning Commission meeting. Uh, if you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, Commissioner Greenfield, would you lead us? Stand up. Anybody that doesn't know, there are um, agendas and um, speaker registration forms on the side. Let me just mention that um, attorneys will have 10 minutes to plead their case, and anybody who has any comments will have three minutes to um, give us their comments. Please limit it to three minutes. We will be watching the time, and um, please try not to repeat yourself. Thank you. It's all yours, John. The scratch, maybe. No, we're not going to scratch out. Oh. I believe there is an item no, no. that's going to be adjourned. Yes. That's yes, there'll be one that's adjourned. Also, um, uh, the other day, just so everybody knows, Newsday had printed that we were going to be uh, hearing um, the Coliseum lease case today. It is not on for today. It was removed from the agenda, and they were notified of it. So if you're here for that, don't waste your time. Go ahead, John. And, uh, commissioners, I'll take a um, motion. Well, first, let's do the roll call, and then we'll get to the adjournments. Commissioner Sakowicz. Commissioner Kaladi. Here. Commissioner Gold. Commissioner Foreman. Commissioner Ellerby. Commissioner Durso. Present. Third Vice Chair Lewis. Present. Vice Chair Greenfield. Present. Chairman Shapiro. Here. Acknowledgement of the receipt of the uh, March 2nd transcript. I make a motion to acknowledge receipt. Uh, we do not have Lewis. the transcript. Oh, we don't have it yet? No. Sorry about that. We won't That's motion. Okay. It, it was a little bit long. <laughs> but she did an outstanding job. Do you think we'll get that? Uh, we were advised by Excel reporting we will receive it 10 to 14 business days from the meeting. Okay. So it has to, OSVAC has to see it before. We'll have it for the next meeting. Okay. 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 Uh, let's go with the scratches. I will take a motion to adjourn uh, NCPC uh, file 15 of 2023 to uh, April 27th. So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Item B is a major subdivision preliminary map application and seek a determination of significance for NCPC file number 2004 P1, map of Wall Estates, located at 186 Wall Avenue in Inwood, town of Hempstead, section 40, block 45, lots 26, 44, and 140. This application is seeking preliminary subdivision approval of a 28,821 square foot parcel into five single family residential lots. To make way for this development, a 2.5 story home and large accessory structure would need to be demolished. Property is located in the hamlet of Inwood, town of Hempstead, and not within 300 feet of an incorporated village or city. The subject property is surrounded by the following uses to the north across Pisa Street are homes. To the east are homes, to the south are homes, to the west across Wall Avenue are homes and a CVS pharmacy on the corner of Burnside Avenue and Wall Avenue. The development is located in the New York American Water District, the County of, San of Nassau County Sewer District, and in the Lawrence No. 15 School District. The development's nearest bus route is the N31, which runs along West Broadway and Rockaway Turnpike, and is closest to the Lawrence and Inwood Long Island Railroad stations. Nassau County Department of Public Works Traffic Engineering and Sanitary and Sewer Units approved the preliminary subdivision map and engineering plans. Town of Hempstead, Nassau County Department of Public Works Civil Site Engineering and Stormwater and Drainage Units have minor comments that could be addressed in the final review. Nassau County Health Department still requires their realty subdivision approval. If preliminary approval is granted, the county will require a performance bond to ensure all public improvements of development are installed correctly at the final subdivision approval. 
there was th this was referred to us under uh, a zoning referral the Planning Commission voted for a modification on March 7th 2019 this application received variances from the town of Hempstead for subdivision lot lot area lot area occupied front yard setbacks rear yard construct dwelling with deck front width from an on street line to front setback line front yard average setback construct dwellings side yard aggregate use use variance to construct a two-family dwelling not permitted in the residence B district it's important to state that the letter for, that there was a letter from the applicant in the file stating that there will be no only single-family dwellings uh, as part of this development I'll quickly read that letter from the applicant Uh, this is from James Velarde, at the contract vendee. Although a variance for a two-family dwelling was approved, we are not going forward with a two-family unit on the project. All homes associated with the project are, in fact, single-family homes. That's all I have. Um, Christian Brown is here to speak on behalf of his applicant. Chris, while you're making your way up here, I want to tell you that you lost your record for most people in attendance. Uh, the last meeting, uh, you were, we had to have crowd control from Nassau County Police and Fire Marshal. You've never brought out crowd control from them. So I'm happy to lose that record. <laughs> Christian Brown, McLaughlin and Stern, 1122 Franklin Avenue, Garden City for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Prakas has covered this application in detail. Uh, this is a long time coming. We're happy, pleased to be at this point. As you know, we've received the necessary variances from the town. We've made the representation that all of these will be single-family homes. Um, and I just note that the purpose of this project is to build housing for uh, teachers and um, rabbis who are serving at the Yeshiva Katana facility, um, which is nearby. So these homes will all be sold to uh, employees and teachers and uh, rabbis who are going to be working at that facility so this is being done in conjunction with with that facility and that's the purpose of this development so with that we hope to move past preliminary address the final comments and get to uh, get underway thank you you're welcome commissioners any questions Gro Groom's wall that it's named after it's the name of the street oh just the street okay I, I thought I, it was a benefactor you no, I, no, it's Wall Avenue, and <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure, I, I wasn't the, asking I'm on sure that the basis. yeshiva will be very happy to take your funds. <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't. For the record, I wasn't interested. Not Walter P. Dowdy, as Mr. O'Brien can probably recall. The, anytime we would have applications in Inwood, you'd often hear the history of a Dowdy Boulevard from the yeah. Civic Association. Yeah, from the Civic Association, and it just so happens my assistant is uh, one of the Dowdies, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to be heard on this? There, nobody wishes to be It's not a Chris Brown case if no one wants to be heard. <laughs> uh, then take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we uh, give uh, preliminary approval for the application on NCPC case file number 2004P-1 map of Wall Estates and that uh, we make a uh, secret determination of uh, neg debt. Is that correct? Yes. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Do we have any, anyone in the public that took speaker registration forms, please pass them forward to uh, give them to staff so we can uh, organize ourselves up here to run a crisp prop meeting because we are under a time constraint where members have to leave before noon. For those that came in late, 
you have to register as a speaker. It's inside that glass area, and there's agendas there. We're happy to have you speak. We just like to know in advance. <coughs> All right, go ahead, Greg. Okay. Uh, first up, we have NCPC file 10 of 2023. This is an application for a two-lot commercial subdivision at a 1640 Hempstead Turnpike in the Hamlet East Meadow in the town of Hempstead's business zoning district. Uh, this is a three-acre subject property situated on the south side of Hempstead Turnpike. Uh, application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 276 feet of frontage on Hempstead Turnpike and 100 feet of frontage on Merrick Avenue into two separate parcels. Proposed lot one uh, will contain the existing Lufthansa uh, office building and will be a total of 1.3 acres. And then proposed lot two, uh, which is for the proposed one story and two story storage containers, uh, will be 1.7 acres. The uh, Town of Hempstead Board of Appeals approved the request for variances for lot A. Uh, height, exceed the number of stories, and maintain the existing five story building on a lesser lot with less than the required two acres. And then for lot B, a special exception for proposed self-storage use, uh, being one and two-story storage containers, a special exception to park in the front yard setback on Merrick Avenue, variance, rear yard, and install storage containers on a lesser lot. Uh, this application was previously seen as a zoning referral uh, by the Planning Commission at the August 19, 2021 hearing, where the Planning Commission voted unanimously to issue a local determination. Uh, as stated before, the existing office building on lot one will remain, and numerous one-story and two-story storage containers will be constructed on proposed lot two. Uh, here today representing the applicant, we have uh, Christopher Robinson of R&M Engineering. Thank Good morning. You, Christopher Robinson, president of R&M Engineering, 50 Elm Street, Huntington, New York. Um, I don't know much more I can add to it. Uh, the front building, the Lithuanza office building, was converted to a storage facility and is up and open. Uh, this is a, there's two existing tax lots, essentially a lot line alteration or a two lot subdivision to separate the rear parcel from the front parcel. Both will have frontage on roads, Hempstead Turnpike or Merrick Avenue, and we provided cross access in between as well. Happy to answer any questions you might have. So Lufthansa flew away? They flew away. They flew the coop. They flew the coop. <laughs> Very good. Commissioners, anything? We do have one speaker registered, uh, Ben Police. If I, you're on this case. Good morning. Name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Ben Police. Uh, I live at uh, 55 Lloyd Court, right behind that I saw the building. And I think that uh, I have a petition here for most people in the neighborhood that we oppose to it because it's already, uh, we have so much traffic on Lloyd Court and Bard Lane. Now we're gonna have more cars, more trucks. Uh, I don't think even our kids in our whole backyard are gonna be safe with these uh, storage containers. Uh, we don't know what most people are gonna store in there. For all we know, it could be explosives. Uh, it could be anything. It's gonna be all kinds of noise, day and night. People coming in with trucks and everything. Storage containers, all right. We more or less, we didn't accept it, but it's there now that uh, I saw a building that, you know, you can, I can wash my dishes and I gotta look at that building. Now I'm gonna have the, the uh, storage containers also. It's not fair. I don't think anyone in this room would like to live there, okay? Not to mention that the uh, property value is gonna go down uh, I don't know, like I said, if any one of you wants to live there, I'll sell my house tomorrow. You come and, pick, come and get it. Thank uh, you. Thank you for your offer. Uh, yes. <laughs> we, don't, we don't take listings here. Okay. Uh, I just want to tell you, we'll accept a petition in a minute. I want to tell you our experience here with self-storage. 
they are lower density, less traffic, they don't put kids in the school to burn in the taxpayers, they don't file tax certiorities because they're very profitable, and they become, after the initial resistance, good neighbors in the community, believe it or not. And we've had a number of cases of new and expanded self-storage, and we've had them where they're repurposed. Having said that, you have some valid concerns which are not under our jurisdiction. You have to talk to the town of Hempstead with respect to the hours of operation. Is there a representative here? Uh, I just sent the engineer, Mr. Mull. Well, if I may, Chair, before the engineer speaks, I asked uh, Mr. Paracas to get me a copy of the BZA grant. And BZA grant, if, as far as the, okay. sa as the sales off, there, there's restricted hours of operation. The BZA grant uh, limits the sales office to 7 a.m. to 8, 8 p.m. maximum. And the actual facility, access to the units by customers, shall be from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. So that's a very important thing because mo mo most commercial areas in the town of Hempstead are 24 s permitted 24-7 operations. So there was a limitation that was placed on, on this, and the grant is from October of 2000. Yeah, that's what I wanted the applicant and the good neighbor, uh, the, the neighbor to hear. Were you at the zoning board hearing? Uh, no. Well, that's another thing. I would like to, a list of people that were notified in my neighborhood because when I went around, no one received this notice. Well, our except, notification. Except one or two people. Our, our, our notification requirements are different than the town of Hempstead. And uh, we have this a. This is uh, for Nassau County Planning yes, Commission. Yes. Uh, what I was explaining to you, sir, is that our notification requirements of the radius map are different than the town of Hempstead. Okay, so how, uh, how many people were notified? The, Just me? It's duly noticed. It's wh wh whoever was required. It's more than just you. Yeah, John I would like Pierre. to see the yeah, list. We can get you that information. I would like to see the list. Because uh, none, of my neighbor, none of my neighbors claim that they received this notice. But your neighbors, these, all those neighbors signed your petition, right? Uh, yeah. Well, okay, so they know about the hearing. They signed the petition. Oh, now they know. But yes. Yeah. Okay. They didn't receive the notice. Gotcha. That's why none of them are here. Okay. But they signed the petition. So we'll accept, in lieu of their personal appearance, we'll accept the uh, petition. So submit that to the staff. And, uh, deal, huh? and, and your time is up. For the record, I have about six pages of certified letters that went out. Thank you. Project. Thank you. Maybe more. Bill. Also fill out a speaker registration afterwards, but first, name and address for the record. My hey. name is Robert Dagnell. I live at 70 Rosalie Court, East Meadow, New York. I live directly behind this facility. Um, I do have many issues with this facility. One is they're saying one or two story structures, which is, uh, to my knowledge, would be at least 20 feet high. How close is that to the fence line? My fence line runs directly along that property. Now, if you're going to put a 20-foot fence or con on construction in front of my property, you're devaluing my property. Number one, that lot is not maintained at all now. It's a mess. Uh, prior, when Lufthansa was there, it was very well kept. They had a security gate that didn't allow people in past 6 p.m. There's no security gate there now. They're saying that people can come and go up to 10 p.m. So how does that affect my children in the yard? Uh, using my pool at night or, or any other thing we want to do in our yard if we have people right outside our fence up until 10 p.m. at night. And I don't see any security gate there now, so what's going to stop them from coming at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., uh, adjacent to my property? And it's only a, what, a six or eight foot fence? Easily can be scaled and into my property, uh, of which, you know, we live in a nice neighborhood and we expect uh, security. And I'm a retired police officer, so I don't think that I'm going to be secure there now if that kind of environment is going to be. And not to even speak about the environment directly next door that I have to deal with, which is the motel, which is another issue, or the Section 8 housing. So now you're adding another issue into my house, into my home and my yard. I find, I find that uh, completely... 
completely unsatisfactory. That they're going to be able to put 20 foot structures directly behind my house. Sir. Yes. Were you at the zoning hearing? I was not. Okay. I, I understand and respect your concerns, but though that is not the issue that's before the Nassau County Planning Commission. That those concerns should have been rightfully put forward at the Town of Hempstead Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Well, my, my retort to that is if I, I can vouch, I didn't get a letter about the zoning, or if I did, it was probably put in junk mail or whatever. That should be something that you need, need to sign for. So, so that you need to sign to, yeah. to know that you got knowledge of it. I can't speak to the process at the Town of Hempstead. They have their own process, but I can tell you they put up a, they require applicants to put up a billboard a three by five large billboard on the property notifying people of the hearing so just because of what you said in case the notice got lost in the mail so if i don't go to that property i don't see it i have I, no I'm, reason to go to that property i'm, I'm just None. telling you the process and i'm not defending I understand the, process. the process the process needs to be refined uh, in many matters then please speak to the town of hempstead and the town councilman that represents your area. Well, I strongly object to this variance, and I don't even know what the variance is. What is there, there is no for the fence line? There is no variance here. The variance was granted by the town of Hempstead. That's what we, that's the, the chair point is I was trying to tell make. you. The only thing that's being done here is to, today is is the applicant is asking to divide the property into two separate tax lots. Which already, I from what I understand, it's not even two acres, so it shouldn't be allowed. But. Uh, but, so it's, but it's been granted by the town of Hempstead. <laughs> so this, this meeting is basically moot. Is that no, that right? isn't what we said. It's, okay. We have a function here that's a ministerial function with respect to the applicants moving a lot line for the purposes of having the tax line recorded in the, in the county clerk's office. We can only react to what we receive from the town of Hempstead your concerns and your gripes with respect to ongoing maintenance of the property are under their jurisdiction. We have no jurisdiction. Uh, I, I respect and understand, I'm very sympathetic to what you're saying, but we're powerless to take any action on that subject. I encourage you to talk to the town uh, so supervisor's office. So is this office. project gonna, can be delayed or the, until, it, until it's it, further? It's, it's, it's in their ballpark. We can't delay it. And, and I read into the record, if you recall, before the limitations that were put in by the town of operation, m almost all commercial property in the town of Hempstead, somebody buys it and, they, and they're within code. They can op operate 24-7. Somebody could have put a convenience store in there, and you'd have people there at all hours of the night from all parts of the community. There are limitations on this that the town put in. Uh, you can't access your unit before so 6 a.m. You can't much. access it after 10 p.m. Speak to that. That does a lot, a lot of good for the neighborhood as opposed to a business that operates 24-7. So understand that they, the town of Hempstead gave them variances. So it's coming to us with them approving all the zoning for this um, subdivision. So we're at a point where it's legal. It's a legal subdivision. I understand. So I... From my knowledge, so what what can I do from this point here today to try to hold that up or stop it? Basically nothing? Uh, uh, our action has nothing to do with the issuance of a building permit. So if you want to do, take action with respect to issuance of the building permit, you have to, the town of Hempstead to go building back to the, the town of Hempstead. Yeah, we, we don't give out permits. All we're doing is subdividing a lot line for recording of taxes. As a taxpayer, you want that to happen. You want them to pay taxes and pay more taxes. <laughs> that can uh, lower mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, we, you know, we us holding it up won't impact the project. Okay. Uh, but but the t please speak to. I feel for you. Uh, I'll try. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk do what to I the can. town. Get your neighbors. Bring that petition to the town. Go to a town board meeting. Go to your councilman. Go to the building department. Okay? You need a copy of that? Can you get a copy of that? Sure, we'll give you him? back. A, John, Thank you. John, give him back a copy. I appreciate the time. No, well, Thank I, you I, I am sorry. No problem at all.
Is there anybody else from the public that wishes to be heard on this? Yes. Will you please fill out a speaker registration form I afterwards? Did. You did? Mm -hmm. Greg, you have it? You're Greg, you. Oh, your name and address. Uh, my name is Anthony Amendola, 1635 Bard Lane, directly around the corner from the proposed project. I'm just concerned why why no one seemed to have received any kind of letter notice when the Beachwood organization who put up the condo development on Merrick Avenue sent out letters every step of the way. We were all informed about everything. This, no one seems to have been aware of it. So the Beachwood organization in community outreach, and they appear before us regularly, is always very good in communicating with the neighbors. We can't hold them, uh, any applicant, to that standard. They're, they're more respectful. I see where you're on the map here. I, I can't read that far, but reading it up front here, you're clearly outside the radius map for notification for us, but you're here. And uh, the, um, I don't know who owns the building now, as we heard, Lufthansa flew away and uh, left this uh, I saw that has to be repurposed because uh, if it isn't, uh, it hurts the taxes of the community. And I can tell you from sitting here, and I'm here 20 years, Lenny's here 23 years, the self storage use, 25 years? 24. 24, okay. <laughs> we have had nothing but good experience with the self storage community. Uh, and it's the, if you had this building converted into a doctor's office building, you would have not enough parking. You would have all the residen residential streets going back to your street with the employees, the nurses, the doctors parking there because the patients inside and the turnover every 15 minutes. You'd really be upset. This use here, I, I don't understand. My wife makes me throw out a lot of things but America likes to save junk. And they pay money to save junk. And people, it, my wife was home last summer, started cleaning out the house to the extent where my neighbors got upset. They thought we were moving. I said, I ain't moving anywhere. My wife made me, but I'm not moving anywhere. And, and they were very upset. The, the self-storage business is booming. <laughs> In my community, Rockville Center, we have two more pending applications. And, and it's just a boom business. I, I, and, and, and they don't, like I said, they don't file tax surgeries, they don't fill the schools, and they, they're not a nuisance in the neighborhood. Just that gives the neighborhood a different kind of a look. Well, it's, you're, it's, they, it's Hempstead Turnpike there. You know. I, I understand that. I've been yeah. there for 46 years. Hempstead Turnpike has always changed from one business to another. But containers stacked up on top of is that what this is storage containers no as no. Opposed no, to no 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 this is they're going to make storage units within the building within the building with uh, mr Muller, yeah maybe you could explain it better richie are you here for this case could someone explain it better it would have been nice to have the applicant here I, i've been waiting until the neighbors were done speaking i think they've raised a number of yeah, questions yeah. that i do want to ask the applicant some of those questions I, I'm having difficulty wrapping my head around this application. The images of the building does look like a dilapidated building that should be torn down and replaced. Oh, uh, it, what, what's going on here? It seems like rather than tearing down the building, we're going to put huge storage containers in the in Let the me Let me clarify, line. Mr. Lewis. Uh, that the pictures you just saw there is the Lithuanza office building as it existed probably several years ago. It was renovated and converted to an interior self-storage facility. It's been up and opening, up and open as a self-storage facility for a better part of a year now. That building's complete, done, has its COs from the town of Hempstead. Uh, what we're looking to do today is to take this three-acre piece of property and cut it into two pieces of property since the self-storage facility only leased the front 1.3 acres. Uh, Lithuanza, as you can see from the picture here, the entire property was paved from property line to property line. There's not a stitch of green that was on the property when they existed. 
we are going to do the new proposal is to do a self storage facility on the back piece of the property which is going to be a mixture of one story and two story recycled storage containers the one story ones are eight feet high uh, the two story ones are six feet to uh, 16 feet to the roof level plus there's a a peak roof to keep the uh, to keep the weather out it is open from the sides as elevators and stairs up to the internal area uh, the picture here I can just to make. just to clarify so that unit in the back that's that's going to have the two stories the 16 foot one mm -hmm. um, people with trucks and whatnot can drive up to that they don't have to wait for some gatekeeper to allow them in right they well, would have direct they get, access the, the property is fully gated fully closed in there's gates that will ever have a keypad or a card to let you into the property so it's completely secure the only thing that's outside of the secure gates are the four parking spaces fronting along Merrick Avenue where they'll have the uh, the sales office next to those four spaces but to get past those four spaces you must already be a renter so you that have would, your keypad and your so security. that would address the 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. correct rules so you so someone can't come to the gate and get in there after 10 p.m. after they, the 10 p.m. and they can't come Walmart. in the morning before 6 a.m. absolutely the the right. southerly property line which is where the nearest residents live uh, currently there's uh, there is absolutely no buffer there it's being increased from 10 to 20 feet double uh, row of evergreens will be placed in there the nearest one-story container to the southerly property line is 20 feet the nearest two-story container to the southerly property line is over 25 feet okay but you're going to add a buffer at the add back the there because the you don't really uh, need that much space back there so to put some kind of buffer between uh, the yeah. fence that's currently there and the neighbors yeah we, we have we have site plans that were approved by the town that shows the double row of evergreens buffering that southerly property and, line and if your applications approved when the meetings over could you make yourself available to speak to some of the neighbors to show them the, the, what you just reported oh, to us absolutely it's very unfortunate and very embarrassing that the applicant isn't here or hasn't had a community meeting to discuss this with the community and it sounds like some good virtues and I'm embarrassed that I'm defending the concept and they should be defending the fact of the matter we, is we did have a community meeting just for the record oh, prior did? to the Zoning Board of Appeals we had about 10 15 people in attendance at that meeting and we explained it showed them uh, renderings and went over the application who is the operator it, it, we all we have is the LLC uh, it's uh, SNL safe and lock they're an operator that operates self storage facilities I just want to have the name in mind for the future <laughs> where, where are they based out of um, they are based on Long Island they are a local company yeah well, there's a lot of good things to this project that you didn't have before neighbors I'm, and I'm glad Commissioner Lewis suggested that you go outside and, and have a little meeting and explain and show and tell. Mr. Muller appears before us regularly, very reputable. Mr. Bavon has worked on this project. He appears before us and he he's, we're, understands what we look for. And uh, on paper it looks okay and I'm sorry they didn't communicate to you better. And you also have a better um, buffer in between the properties, which is major. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? And a security else? gate. Good. Right. Good point. Is there anybody else in the public that wishes to be heard? Not seeing any, I'll take a motion. Don't all jump. <laughs> motion to approve 10 uh, secret determination and application for minor subdivision 10 2023 with a negative declaration. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Neighbors, please meet with these two representatives outside and let them show you more detail that we don't have on the screen here. And thank you very much for coming down. <clears throat> okay, Greg, go ahead. Next one. Thanks. Uh, next up, we have NCPC file 11 of 2023. Uh, this is an application for a three lot subdivision at 3912 Wanzers Lane in the hamlet of Seaford in the town of Hempstead's residential B zoning district. 
Uh, this is a 23,260 square foot area subject property situated on the south side of Wanster's Lane. Uh, this application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 173 feet of frontage on Wanzers, into three separate parcels. Proposed lot A will have 57 feet of frontage and be 6,286 square feet. Proposed lot B will also have 57 feet of frontage and be 6,344 square feet. And proposed lot C will have 59 feet of frontage and be at, uh, a total of 10,629 square feet. Town of Hampstead Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed subdivision, and the application is considered as of right. Uh, zoning in the area requires 55 feet of frontage and 6,000 square feet of area. Uh, the subject property is located in the FEMA flood zone AE and will have to comply with all applicable building standards. Uh, I believe, uh, as Bill has let me know, the builder has met preemptively with the town of Hempstead. Uh, for instance, the home to the uh, West will be the only home with the basement. The other two homes will ha not have a basement and their ground floor must be raised to, I believe it was uh, nine feet. First floor. First floor. Thank you. Uh, Town of Hempstead has also recently completed drainage work in the area. Uh, there are neighbors that are concerned with potential flooding issues. Um, the Planning Commission, I provided you all with the comments that we have received from the neighbors. They've also signed a petition. Um, I'll let them speak, but I think uh, essentially they're going to be requesting adjournment. But uh, here today, representing the applicant, we have Bill Benesso of Fricelli Deegan Tirana. Good morning, Mr. Benesso. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. William Benesso, Fricelli Deegan Tirana, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Uniondale, New York, here on behalf of the applicant. Mr. Joseph Pagari, seated to my left is the principal of the owner of the property, is also the builder, and he's here this morning uh, along with me. As uh, noted by Mr. Hosel, this is a completely as of right application. It is an application proposing a three lot subdivision on a parcel of property that is nearly 24,000 uh, 24, square feet. 23, it's 23,260.63 square feet. It has a frontage along the south side of Wanzer's Lane of 173 feet. The proposal is to build three fully compliant lots. This is the Residence B District. As noted by Mr. Um, Hosel, the requirement is 55 feet of width and 6,000 square feet of lot area. The proposal for the lots is uh, plot A, the, east, the westernmost lot, 57 feet of width. 6,286 plus uh, square feet of area. The middle lot, plot B, 57 feet of width, 6,344 plus feet, uh, square feet of uh, lot area. And the largest lot, the lot uh, furthest east, is 59 feet wide and will have over 10,000 square feet, 10,629.474 square feet. So these lots are in fact oversized based on zoning requirements. The parcel of property is uh, partially situated within a uh, drainage easement that runs along the very uh, far northeast corner of the property. It runs perpendicular basically to Wanzer's Lane. The actual drainage structures are off site, be that as it may. Um, and, and that is part of the concern that, that has been expressed to me by some of the neighbors who have called me. Um, in order to accommodate those concerns, it's first important to note that the proposed houses, uh, as shown on the, on the uh, subdivision map that was provided, the closest uh, house, or the, the house on Plot C, the closest it would be to even the easement area, much less the actual drainage uh, facilities would be 14.34 feet away. Um, the houses that are proposed are fully compliant from setback standpoints, height standpoint, building coverage standpoints, um, and the applicant will agree to a condition that uh, on plot C that there be no structures, no uh, buildings, no development within the drainage easement area. He will also accept a condition requiring the implementation of roof drains for these houses. The concern, again, having to do with drainage. 
Uh, roof drains are different from gutters and leaders where the water just basically runs down your gutters and then just goes off out onto the property and goes wherever it's going to go. Roof drains drain directly into dry wells that are proposed to be installed on the property so the water is directed to the dry wells for better drainage, doesn't allow it to move in other, in other uh, um, uh, directions. Um, and, and it's important to also point out that this is, as noted, this is a, a FEMA flood zone. Um, the, it's, it's AE7, which means the lowest uh, first floor level has to be nine feet because New York State requires another two feet of what's called freeboard. So the, high, the lowest that the first floor could be built would be at nine feet elevation. These will be built at, 10, at 11 feet elevation to be even more compliant. That was as a result of meetings held with the town of Hempstead Building Department. Also as a result of meetings held with the town of Hempstead Building Department, you, you had a, an agreement on the part of the applicant to only build one house with a basement, the one furthest away from the drainage easement. The other two will be built with crawl spaces. So all drainage, all FEMA concerns have been addressed. All proposed development of these houses is fully compliant. Um, and in fact, um, very much uh, will improve, likely improve drainage conditions in the area as, from the standpoint of stormwater runoff. From the standpoint of groundwater, that's that's the groundwater. It's, uh, there's a high water table here. There's nothing that can be done for that, whether you put these houses there or not. That's unaffected by anything that they're doing. Um, the houses are proposed each to have a one-car garage, and each uh, lot will have a double-wide driveway. So each house will be able to accommodate three off-street parking spaces. And my client will agree to a, a further condition that the garage space on each house not be converted to living space. So consequently, it'll provide more than, uh, it'll provide three off-street parking spaces. And I know that was a concern expressed by the neighbors in their correspondence to the, to the um, commission and, and, uh, and to me. So um, that's been addressed. And in terms of being in character with the neighborhood, I know the, the commission looks to see if that's the case. These lots are very much in keeping with the development of, in the area. In fact, they are some of the largest lots in the area. If you look at uh, the houses fronting on Wanzer Lane, you have a total of 12 lots. Of those 12 lots, 10 of them are actually substandard in terms of width. They are less than 55 feet in width. That's 83%. Uh, of the lot areas uh, of the homes on Wanzer's Lane. You have seven that are less than 6,000 square feet, 58%. If you look to the south on the, the north side of South Street, uh, which is uh, backing up to this property, you have 11 uh, lots that front on the north side of South Street. 10 of those have less than 55 feet of width and less than 6,000 square feet of area, so 91%. So, these lots, as proposed, not only are fully compliant, but they're actually oversized and they're larger and wider than the majority of the lots in the immediate area. Um, that's our direct presentation. I believe that uh, everything that needs to be addressed has been addressed. Certainly, uh, the board uh, made, made a, or the vice chairman made a good point in the case before this. What's before you is the subdivision of these three lots. Not the grading and drainage, not the FEMA aspects. Those are all the responsibility of the town of Hempstead to enforce and ensure that, they, that the property is developed in accordance with those regulations. This commission is here to consider the three lot subdivision and the three lots here are not only fully compliant, but they're oversized and they're definitely in keeping with the residential area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor, uh, with, with respect uh, to this project, we reviewed it at the pre-meeting, and you could have put a fourth house there, but then required a, a variance. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I was thinking the same thing when I was reviewing the application after having a call with one of the neighbors. Um, I looked at the property. As noted, this property is almost 24,000 square feet. It's 23,000 and change. They could have requested a variance from the zoning board 
for four lots, those lots would have been 5,815 square feet, 185 feet deficient, 3% deficient. Those lots, while they would have also been substandard on width, again, you have, you have many of the lots on Wanzer with substandard lot width, lot widths. So it is an application that would have had a very good possibility of being approved by the Board of Appeals in Hempstead. Certainly Mr. O'Brien, your, your counsel, sat on that board. He knows that board. He knows the types of variances that they've granted in the past. I've done a lot of variance work in the town of Hempstead, and I can tell you that that would have not have been an unreasonable variance. So my client, you're correct, could have come in, got, tried to get a zoning board variance from the, uh, from, uh, for four lots. Had he gotten that, we'd be here asking for four lots. He didn't do that. He did the right thing from the perspective of what the code requires. The code requires 55 feet of width, 6,000 square feet of area. He's far exceeded that. And, and Mr. Benesso, the way it's designed, just, just for the record, it, it basically would prevent a four-lot subdivision at any time in the future if this is oh, built as a three. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we'll accept it, we'll accept a condition. Uh, and again, all of these conditions that That's we're leading. that we're offering up, <laughs> That's we would what I was <laughs> we we would we w are prepared to put them in a declaration of restrictive covenants to be recorded in the county clerk's office against the property so that it runs with the land. That but, it will not be further subdivided. Right. We would accept a condition that the, so, that none of the lots be further subdivided. So, Mr. O'Brien. My very learned counsel has listened and learned from me. That's what I was leading up to for the better for the neighbors. If something happens in the future, there's a fire or something that, I would like a, and I'm glad you offered it, uh, a uh, covenant and restriction, no further subdivision. And I, I think that protects the neighbors and that's not unreasonable if your intention is as stated from the applicant. Agreed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have a number of people that uh, would like to speak. Um, first one is Matthew Garif. Am I correcting pronunciations? Name and address for the record, please. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Garrett, uh, 3898 Wanza Lane, Seaford. Um, I've lived on uh, Wanza Lane since 1976. It's a long time. Uh, but it was a really beautiful block at one time with trees lining the whole thing, gravel streets it was just beautiful it's grown a lot in that time this is a small narrow dead end street it gets narrower as it goes down so it's not wider as it goes down for cars uh, by adding three houses at the end it, you know it causes kind of hazardous conditions as it is it's hard for any fire trucks and ambulances uh, to get down and turn around and adding Adding three houses, if there was an emergency, I don't know how it would all work. Um, my neighbor, uh, Mr. Powell, right across the street from these houses, has been a fire captain a long time since I've been there. And um, he's, he's been through ambulances and emergency situations on that block and has experienced it. And it's not an easy thing when you're down at that end of the block. Um, so delivery trucks have a hard time getting up and down the block and just turning around. I'm mean, just a small truck has a, a big deal to turn around. They turn on, around on people's driveways at times to just, I mean, on their lawns just to get around. Um, I feel it would be even harder for the ambulances, trucks, emergency vehicles to, to make this situation happen. I don't know if it's going to get even better or worse, but it seems like it would get worse because we have like a congestion of cars as it is going up and down uh, and people that don't, don't even know the block and they think it's a through block. It's not. They got to turn around. They go flying down the block. We have a lot of children on the block that play all the time. Um, at least 10 or 12 kids are on that block at different times. Um, besides the, 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 the emergency thing, and I, and I think that's a really important thing, plus, you know, the fire hydrant is up the block a lot more than where these new houses are going to be. I don't know if they're going to have enough time to run that fire hose all the way from where the hydrant is to all the way those houses are that are kind of backing in. Um, that's another concern. The other thing is the flooding. Um, I've experienced at least the three biggest storms that have ever hit Long Island. And um, uh, there, there are these signs at the end of the dead end that say, you know, there's a guardrail, and then there's a sign that says dead end. And at the bottom of the sign, there's a new sign there now because they made it higher, but 
but the sign that was there was a little bit lower and at the bottom of that sign the metal bottom the, the water was up to that bottom and I just want everyone to know that the water especially the builder um, the water goes up to the bottom of that sign and then starts running up the block so I know you, you, you addressed all the gutters that are going to run off and, and, and dry wells for them and all I, I hope that is done because it's only going to add to more water because right now the water f goes into that yard and then circulates through the land. But right now with more blacktop, concrete, driveways, where's all that water going to go? You know, it's just going to flood right into our street even more. Um, um, you know, that, that's a big concern. What they did to the easement to fix it in the fall, I know it's not your concern at this meeting, but it didn't do a thing. It was just money dumped into the dirt because all they did is take some, some you know, uh, pipes and run some water through it for the easement that doesn't work at all. The land is still as low as it is. is. I've never seen the street that was behind it because they raised it now and that yard is in our dead end. It was never there. They raised it that much. And these houses going up at 11 feet don't know what that's going to look like, but what 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 are we up to on the time? Yeah, I mean, 11 feet. I mean, it's really up there. Um, I feel for the you know the, the congestion, Thank more you. more vehicles and the children on the block and and, and the fire fire Thank situation is weird. Thank you for your Should comments. Be Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I want to address the fire situation okay. first. All right. I'm a 48 year first responder. One of our members absent today is ex chief. We're very concerned always about that and we address it. I want to assure you, the volunteer fire service on Long Island, and especially on the South Shore where I'm familiar, the dedication and devotion of the guys get to the fire. They get there. I once drove a truck across the lawn, got yelled at by the chief because I broke the sprinkler, lawn sprinkler system. I said, chief, it was not just a drill, it was a real fire. I said, I'll get the insurance company to pay for the sprinkler, the lawn sprinkler, and I did. Rest assured, they'll get there. They'll stretch the hose. The, uh, the young kids uh, are very good. They're highly trained. Nassau County uh, Fire Commission uh, Training Center in Beth Page trains all these kids more than when I joined 48 years ago. And that is, should not be a concern. With respect to your other issues, it's not our jurisdiction. You should really talk to the town, especially with respect to the signage. If there's no sign at the entrance saying no outlet or dead end street. Well, I wasn't, resp that wasn't so much. I was just trying to describe how much water comes on big storms. Okay, you well, know, think that's, about, you know, it's pretty hard. That's, that's out of our jurisdiction. It's four and, feet at least, you know, yeah, uh, as it comes up. I know the way. town is trying to address it in different areas, and they have programs for it, yeah. so you have to talk to them. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Susan Ehrlich. Uh, we have your uh, letter that has also been forwarded to. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, that's basically what I'm going to read. I added a little to it. Um, I live on 3890 Barber Court. Name, name and address for the record, please. My name is Susan Ehrlich, 3890 Barber Court in Seaford. So if you see Barber Court in the photo, my house is with the brown roof backing up to the end of the dead end. Um, we are extremely concerned about how this project could permanently affect the flow of floodwaters. Our backyard already floods in an average rainstorm, and this is after the drain project has happened. The picture I emailed you with my shed in the backyard, um, that's after the drain was put in. Um, disrupting the vegetation and added houses in that area of the property could worsen flooding on our property, leading to more expensive flood insurance and damages to our home. So my fence line in my backyard continues that easement that runs up South Street. It basically turns into a creek in my backyard when it rains. One of the reasons we chose our property was the privacy that we have in our yard. Building two extra houses on top of the one that's already there will significantly decrease the privacy and natural serenity of our home. It will also increase traffic in what is currently a very quiet, tiny, dead end where the neighborhood children gather for kickball games. So I just want to advocate a little more for the kids here. Um, it's a very special area in our neighborhood. Barbara Court connects through my backyard to the dead end. 
So there's a dozen kids who live in Barbara Court, at least a dozen who live on Wanzers, and then there's also dozens of kids on Jackson Avenue who gather in the court and in the dead end. So they have kickball tournaments, and when words of the kickball tournaments get out, you see cars dropping their kids off to join in the fun. Um, it's really special. My backyard is like a throughway between the court and the dead end, and it's very safe for the children. Um, there's like a, that, the yard of the house now is like a park-like backyard, and it's beautiful. It's a special place for the kids. Um, Wanzer's Lane is a very small dead end. Squeezing three homes into that lot is excessive. Um, I think the contractors are explo exploiting the land to make a profit and it's totally gonna disrupt our little neighborhood. Um, and all the trucks and construction vehicles, I don't know how they're gonna fit down there. And it's gonna be very dangerous for the children who play there not only in the summer, but all year long. Overall, building three new houses on that lot would only have negative impacts on our already crowded, flooded neighborhood. We strongly oppose the application. Thank you. Thank you. One response. The once it goes through and there's a permit, the town of Hempstead you have to turn to for help with respect to that. I don't agree with your comment that they're exploiting it. If they wanted to exploit it, they would have applied for four homes, and as Mr. Bonesso mentioned, it would have probably regretfully be approved by the town of Hempstead. We're dealing with a few cases like that now that aren't on the agenda today. This is more responsive and more reasonable. Whether you, it's a change from the status quo, but the jurisdiction for those issues with respect to building and construction, you have to take up with the town of Hampstead. If you lived in this area, you would know, you would know that it's completely unreasonable with the amount of flooding that occurs on an average rainstorm. It floods the whole area, all across Jackson, comes up Wanzer's Lane, comes up the easement, and that's a regular rainstorm. Uh, I'm sorry the town hasn't addressed it, and they tried, and it hasn't worked, uh, but we can't, um, we have no jurisdiction over that. And we're, we understand and we hear this from time to time on cases. And, and remember, understand that this is as a matter of right so they, they're doing everything that's responsible under the under the code um, and as was said earlier and I think this is was this one the one that we can add an extra house to? code yes. or no oh, code yeah. people the people who are making this, these decisions don't experience the flooding that we experience. were you at the zone uh, there was no zoning board here there's no this is as of right, right. chair it's, it's a matter of right so the bottom line is is that Got to talk to your town council person. You really should go to the town and let so them like change. So like Steve Rhodes? No, Steve. Steve is no longer on the Nassau County Legislature. Oh right, he's a senator. He's a senator. He's a senator. Okay. But you can talk to him. But the town of Hempstead, pull up. I'm not familiar with who your town council. I think it might is. be Chris Caratini, if I'm not mistaken. Carini. Carini. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh or, yeah. Or go talk to the building department because you know our hands are, are basically tied in this type of a situation. If we turn around. And it's a matter of right. I mean, it seems to me as though the builder is trying to do everything proper. And knowing how uh, their attorney handles these cases, uh, they've gone beyond um, the norm. So, you know, it really puts us in a position that, truthfully, if, if we turn around and we say no to this, they can go right into court, sue Nassau County, and get it overturned in an Article 78. So, you know, they're trying to do the right thing. The right thing would be to leave that land alone. Well, but that's, for our they, they have, you know what, but they have the right to build it. And that's not the point. They have a right to build it. This gentleman bought the property and has a right to build the homes there. So, I mean, we, we feel for you. We've seen this so many times, and our hands get tied, and it's, it's tough on us because we hear what you're saying. We understand what you're saying. Okay, I grew up in an area that somebody shoehorned a house right in front of my home and killed my water view. And I haven't forgotten it, living there since 1965. So, And these I are all single-family homes? There can't be two-family homes? Single-family. Single family. That the town is very good on. There, yes. 
and, and they can't have an entrance to the basement door, so the town writes that in there. Basement. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Benesso, uh, just, just the point, because it was brought up and you didn't go through a zoning hearing, you know, you are offering covenants and restrictions regarding, uh, you know, the garage not being converted in, into living space. As part of that, would you also, uh, would your client also agree that the, prop, uh, that the homes remain one family homes and no application be made to, for multiple family dwellings? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, if I can ask Harry and Jennifer Udell to come up together. Yeah. Thank you. The yeah, hour is getting late for us. We might lose the quorum. We have a, a very filled agenda today. I, Name and I address for the I records. I provided a PowerPoint presentation to put up on the screen. Uh, we, we don't normally do that. Oh, when I spoke to Mr. Holsel, he said I could. Oh, I do. I have actual pictures of what the street will look like and what plot C. I, my I got nervous when you said PowerPoint. Uh, Sorry. Uh, my biggest thing is I'm going to show you plot C and I'm going to give you a reason why I think plot C. Again, and I, I'd like to note yeah. we're, Come on. we're not against the subdivision, to be honest with you. We're looking for a subdivision of the land into two parcels, not three. I don't understand the four because we do have a dead end, and when you add the 57, 57, and 59, and then divide that by four, by four you only go 43 across. But four is not being proposed. No, 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 I know, but I'm saying you guys say four fit, but if you go. Four needs a variance, that's what we were saying, but oh, it's not like the issue. Let's just deal with the issue at hand. I'm All right, interested. so here's my issue right here. This is plot C. You see the driveway? You see the end of our dead end? Yes. When we snow, the snow gets pushed in front of that driveway. We what snow. snow? We haven't had it this year. <laughs> <laughs> I know we haven't had any this uh, I'm year. But Global warming. Are you listening to Al Gore? <laughs> no. Um, Good. Me neither. When, when they plow our street, <laughs> they push the snow in this area directly in front of the driveway of Plot C. So the only way for us to get out of our homes is to push the snow down the block. South Siemens Neck Road that we border is an excavate. Ex evacuation route. So what they do is they take the snow from South Stevens Neck Road, not to leave it on there since it's like an out road for the rest of the peninsula. They take the snow from there and also put it at the end of our block. <laughs> I'm actually more concerned for the people who would buy this home. Say we do snow, there's no way they can get out. The snow would legit sit in front of their driveway. When we were looking at it yesterday, the plot of the, the driveway slip for that third driveway, you're only leaving about two feet to where the actual dead end ends. It does not leave enough room to get us out. I mean, this is this is a legit safety concern of subdividing land into three. And again, I'm just going to reiterate. I have a petition of over 50 names. We did a request for an adjournment because we have six people here. I think nine letters went to the commission. We have about another 10 who weren't able to take off for work or out of town and would like to come. Well, let's, as well. let's just, for the benefit of those here, can we ask Mr. Vanesso and his client to see if they could address moving? the driveway flipping the house, because you do, I guess, make a valid concern, and you know it best. Not that we would welcome any snow, but I still predict there's going to be a March surprise storm. We're, we're past due. Talk about four years ago when it snowed every weekend in March. <laughs> I, I was in bulk. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, okay, you go to the mic, Bill. Bill, come to the mic. The driveway for Plot C is as far west as it can go. Oh, okay. The only thing, other thing you could do would be to reduce lots A and B to 55 feet of width, which I don't think uh, anybody wants to do because then it makes it the, the lot smaller. And then you could p theoretically move it over another four feet. It would make Plot C that much bigger, but it would make Plots A and B smaller. So, and, well, I'll save my remarks about snow removal. Thank you. Stay Just there. don't use the quote from Fran Purcell. I mean, say you did change the plots, you made them smaller. Then the argument of being able to accommodate the residents and the parking, that now goes away because you, you do remove the street parking on that side. I'd like to note that it is true, yes, Plot C has a two-car driveway and a garage. I mean, come on now. We're, not, we're, we're Long Islanders. Most people who park on their garage don't actually park in their driveway because now you have to move your car for your husband or wife to get out of the garage the next morning. Plot C actually has no street parking. You would be selling this home to, a, say, say you sell it to We're a family. We're not selling it. 
I know, but I'm saying, say you're a family and you buy it, right? You have two teenage people, you have four cars. There is nowhere to put, do you want your teenage daughter parking you know, a block away? If you subdivided this into only two properties, you give both properties very large space. You give very nice homes that help the neighbors, help the residents up our property value. And you also are enabled to allow the residents to keep their cars in, in front of their own houses. You give the new residents places to park their cars. You keep us safe from snow, water. Well, you know, again, I understand water and everything has to go through the town of Hempstead. We're just but kind you of also have to remember, three homes are a matter of right. They no, I understand right. that. Okay, so I'm just, I want you to understand that. So they're not going to build less. I don't know of any developer that builds less no, when they're allowed to do three homes. They're going to do three homes. They didn't try to do four, which would definitely hurt the situation even worse. I still so. don't see how four fits all the way across, because if they have to be 50, 50, 50, again, I guess you have to get an ordinance to destroy, I guess, the end of make our block go longer. But I think then you go into the easement, so I don't, I don't see how that happens. Um, but I'd also like to note, in the case that you did previous to this, you mentioned the applicant and the applicant really should have reached out to the people. I'd like to note that the applicant has been on our street and a lot of the neighbors have spoken to him and asked him what his plans are and he flat out said that he wasn't gonna do this. He said, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm not sure, and then three days later we get a letter in the mail saying that he was subdividing it to three. So I'm also bringing that. He should have, when we asked, at least given us a notice. The letter we got in the mail was dated the 17th. We received it eight days later with a 10-day turnaround to be here. The, the notices that are sent out, it's under the county charter. The county charter says when they need to be sent out. So, yeah. so th they, can't they can't vary from that. They would be in violation of law if they sent it out earlier. We, yeah. We've had people come before us, you sent it to me too early and I forgot about the meeting. So it's, uh, like they, I say, it I just am, follows the rules. I am also requesting the adjournment. I have letters out to the town of Hempstead, to the building department, to FEMA, to the fire department, to the police department. Nobody has been able to return back to me because of the short tell. turnaround. Um, okay. Again, like I said, we're not against the subdivision. We're trying to prove that this third home, because of the shortness of our street, is a safety hazard. and. Just because, you know, my son's finger fits in the socket doesn't mean that it's sticking Th in it. Thank you yeah. very much. We hear your comments, and um, the applicant will respond to everything at the end. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? My name is Harry Udell. I am the owner of 3893 Wanzers Lane. I just wanted to say that I thought we were talking to the owner before. Oh, I guess she's, yeah, she's a real boss, so we know that, right? <laughs> I got that impression. Life. We all know that. Um, so I just want to say thank you for the Board of Commissions for taking your time to listen to us today. Uh, we really appreciate you take your time uh, to listen to the neighborhood speak about the consequences that will incur if this company builds these three massive homes on one plot of land. It will change the whole aesthetics of our community to start. The loss of privacy and quaintness, as well as the increase of traffic flow, are just a few issues. Adding these issues will make up, adding these homes will make up 33% of the entire size of the block on this one plot of land. There are a lot of young children who are always playing on the block. During the construction, what about the debris? They have proven to not clean up after themselves already, and they haven't even started work yet, which we've had some instances with um, neighboring um, blocks. They, they did all the work, they made all the junk, and they said they would clean up, but they haven't done anything yet. It's still in these people's backyards. Um, so what should we all expect in the future if this proposition does get passed? Another main issue that affects many people, besides the homes and the residents in the area, is parking and driving. A lot of snow from South Siemens Neck is pushed to the end of our block. Where will they put the snow? Delivery trucks and garbage trucks already have a difficult time on our blocks as well, as the school buses that have to come and turn around to bring our children to school. What about the loss of the parking? I understand he said he's going to be putting driveways in, but if you put two double-wide skirts, that's significantly more space that you're going to be taking up on our already small, narrow block. Um, these are all major concerns that need to be thought about before building all these obtrusive homes on such a small and narrow block. Environmentally, it will increase the amount of noise pollution, which also causes disturbances to the already tax-paying homeowners, as well as the waterways running on the property will be driven towards other homeowners' properties. If we have learned nothing from the past decade of Long Island storms, what we have learned is that water comes up. All right? If you add three houses at the bottom of the hill, where will the water drain? It will move further up and flood more homes, as well as the fact that there is zero drains on our block. There is nowhere for the water to go. Now, in closing, 
I would just say this company is looking to build large homes that will destroy the character of our loved and cherished neighborhood. And the fact that this company wants this one plot of land to be equivalent to 33% of the homes on the entire block is greedy, gluttonous, and simply wrong. This company and these homes would be a nuisance to our neighborhood. And you allowing this company to build three homes in our residential area makes us very concerned. Our schools are already the only school in the area with no universal daycare because there is no room in the schools to hold any more children. Is the town planning on building more schools to accommodate the overflow of children? This does not right the wrong of this proposed construction. There, therefore, I respectfully ask you do not pass this proposition to build three homes on 3912 Wanzer's Lane. Thank you very much for your time, and I very much appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, Elizabeth Hands. I hope I pronounced it right. Sorry. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Elizabeth Hanshi. I live at 3919 South Street behind the subdivided plots. Um, I thank everyone for their time. This was actually extremely informative. Uh, I know a lot of the stuff that's been covered. We now know the drainage and the permits and everything maybe is a different meeting, so I won't reiterate some of the points that have already been made. My main concern was always water flow in the area, which everyone said it already. It's a tiny little narrow block. Jackson around the corner from me, that's our kids' bus stop, and we've had days with minimal rainstorms where the bus couldn't get in to pick the kids up, and some people's kids didn't go to school that day because the bus couldn't get down the block. So it's not necessarily this development or that development. It's just, for me, more the issue of the water containment and making sure that it's been thought through appropriately because it's there are a few homes here that haven't spoken yet whose lots just flood now from a regular rainstorm, and they're down based below where this dead end is. So I think the concern is that if anything's raised up and water collects there, it's naturally going to roll down to Jackson where these homes sit, and they already get flooded as is. I know it's been thought of. I know we're talking about dry wells, and that all sounds wonderful. I hope that it works. But that just for me personally was one of my main concerns to just hear how the water flow was going to be addressed because South especially had a huge water issue that the town came in and really tried to address last year. They've taken care of some of it, but the concern is always will it build up again with any new developments or new additions to the area. Um, I also think that the people who live there are trying to paint a picture of what this block actually looks like. It's the kind of block that two cars can barely fit going side by side, and then if you parked on the side, you're definitely not getting two cars down. My block happens to be the same way. My only advantage is I have an out on Jackson and Siemens Neck where they only have the one outlet. So from a selfish concern, lot C on the end right now is sort of like an oasis. Um, some people might not like it, but I like egrets and falcons and bluebirds and blue jays and cardinals, and they all come and sort of are they baseball teams you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, they all come there. They all play ball I'm right kidding, at the I'm end. Kidding. It's wonderful to watch. So from a nature element, selfishly, I look onto it and I enjoy that. Um, I don't think anybody thought that there wasn't going to be a subdivision of this plot. It is a massive plot. I'm a product of it. I live on a house that was one lot that now has two. So I know that the neighborhood is changing and people are getting used to that. I think it's more the concern of the size of the block with three homes on a lot versus two homes that most people are kind of trying to come to terms with and see how it would actually work in the flow of the neighborhood. So. One comment on the drainage issue. This is something that Nassau County is very concerned with. And I know you and your neighbors may not want to hear this, but it's been our experience that new housing actually betters the okay. area because of the fact that the rules and regulation of the Nassau County Health Department are that you must retain the water on your property and put in massive dry wells, and that these dry wells have to retain a three inch, or is it four inch? Bill, you can yeah, Actually, it's the Clean Water Act okay, that started clean. this. So water is supposed to remain on the property where it falls. So all new construction is the water is supposed to stay on the property so it's not going to run down the street on somebody else. Town of Hempstead is required to enforce that and require that. And it's I think a little the requirement is three inches. It's usually three, three inches of water. Yeah. I, I know that area very well. It's a and tough mo area mo in general to control mo most water. Most of the water issues there are the tidal flooding. You know, we have, you know, how many spring tides where the water comes yep. up on the roads. It's all the time. And, you know, no new construction is going to have any effect on that. Yeah, it, was, it was pointed out in the... Um, 
PowerPoint from your neighbor that, you know, this won't solve that problem. And it's true, these, these, these won't solve that problem, but they also won't make it any worse. The, if anything, there'll be a slight mitigation because the issue with stormwater is it's too, mu too much at one moment. And if you can get some into the dry well, which is three inches is a significant amount, it'll moderately help. But it's, but the source of the problem, the high water table, is really right, not going to go away. Yeah, the dead end really is the concern, I think, for most people, because that's really where the water collects. So it's hard, I guess, to wrap your mind around that improving. I know you're saying all of the things that are going to be added in there certainly could help, but it's hard when you see the water collect there, and then it drains out in that one area and doesn't flow into other properties. It's a scary thought to think that that might get interrupted and diverted. That's really all I had to Thank say. Thank you very about. much. Thanks. Uh, last but not least, uh, Wanda Seal. Name and address for the record, please. Hi. Hi, I'm Wanda Seal. I uh, live at 2414 Jackson Avenue. My property is the one that gets all the water flowing into it. I know you've been talking about the ten town of Hempstead. I've been fighting with the town of Hempstead for I don't know how many years, 10 years, having my, uh, my, have my property raised, even when my house was raised 10 feet they would not allow my property to be raised. So I have pictures of uh, my house being flooded after the town of Hempstead worked on our roads to uh, stop the flooding. And it's all from this property. A lot of it's from this property, other than the canal also uh, floods me from the front. But in the back, water actually flows down because I am the lowest house. If you want to see pictures, of my house being flooded from that property, I will show you. And if you're going to raise that property level up, and I'm going to be lower and more of a ditch, I don't agree with this. If they want to build two houses, let them build two houses. But the third house is really going to mess up my house. You talk about um, the dry wells. They want to put dry wells in my house, too. All these contractors and the town of Hempstead and all. But because of the water table being so high, they weren't allowed, they couldn't do it. I don't know what's going to happen with those houses with dry wells. I don't think that's going to help either. I've had uh, check uh, off valves uh, installed in the streets for my property two times. Both of them failed. They do not help. If you see the pictures of my house being flooded from a water main that broke on Wanser a couple of years ago, my house was the only house that had water around it, all um, muddy water or uh, and, 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 and I was the only house that had this done. And nothing, Town of Hempstead has nothing, has never done anything for me. So I don't want to hear, go talk to the Town of Hempstead, because they don't do anything, especially with the flooding. And the flooding now is worse, even with their help. And if now if this property level is going to be higher than my house, which now their shed is the same level as my property. If it goes higher, I'm going to be lower and I'm going to be in a ditch. I would like you to see the, my pictures of how my house floods because of that property. And uh, I guess that's it I've got to say. I'm just worried about how worse my house is going to be to, uh, de dealt with because of this building uh, there, especially the third house, which is going to be the closest to my house. And with the easement I have uh, in my property, I have the easement. And I have drainage from the town of Hempstead. I got everything. I contacted, I don't know how many people on the town of Hempstead. Uh, Doug Toomey, uh, Rebecca Sinclair, Laura Gilden, News 12. I've contacted everybody. So I can't tell you the town is helping me at all. I prefer them not to build the three houses. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Vanessa, would you like to respond? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm first going to object to any adjournment of this case. It, it, there's really no legitimate purpose for it. We've heard from a number of the neighbors. We've heard their concerns. Putting this off for three weeks is not going to change anything that the board has heard, and it's not going to change the application. The application is completely as of right, as noted. Um, regarding the, the assertions that have been made, emergency vehicles, Mr. Greenfield took care of that one quite well, uh, and I would reiterate uh, what he said. And it just so happens my, my client is a retired FDNY firefighter. He too said to me, 
If there's a fire, they'll get to it. If there's an emergency, they'll get to it. So it's a little bit of a red herring, as is the snow removal. Uh, there are many, many streets in the town of Hempstead that have dead ends and they have houses at the end of those dead ends. The snow plows just don't plow them in. Right now they've had the opportunity to plow those the end of the street in because there's nothing up against it. But a rightfully constructed house with a driveway there, they will not push the snow there. They'll remove the snow. So there, there are answers to these questions and, and, the, and the best resolution for these minor issues is not to say, no, developer, you are not entitled to build what the code says you're entitled to, which is three houses. Um, I, I would note the, the one uh, resident who got up uh, from South Street and pointed out that um, uh, the concern is, is drainage. As she noted, her house was the subject of an application that came before this board in, uh, in 2019. It's a 45 foot wide lot two houses subdivided from 90 feet. Um, we're providing fully compliant parcels. And as far as the grading and the drainage, as you noted, oftentimes new houses, new development actually improves the drainage condition because the properties are graded properly and drainage requirements are imposed. Mr. Nimmo pointed out the obligations that apply to the town of Hempstead and the town of Hempstead Department of Buildings enforces those. Um, the grading on this, as much as the house may be higher than the neighbor uh, on Jackson Avenue, the grading won't be. The grading will be modified to retain the water on the property. It has to be done. That's what the town requires. And lastly, I'll say that I certainly don't find fault in the neighbors being concerned and expressing their interest and concerns. That is their right. They live there. The biggest investment in most of everyone's lives is their home. So by all means, other than calling my client greedy, I don't take any, I don't object to anything that they said, but I, I would again reiterate it's that the jurisdiction of this board pertains to the three lot subdivision. It is completely as of right, fully compliant lots and fully compliant houses, and we would ask that the board grant those. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vanessa. Uh, is there anybody on the commission that has any other questions? I'm not seeing any, I'll take a motion. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Thank you neighbors for coming down. Next case. Okay, Greg. Let's go. Uh, next up is uh, NCPC file 12 of 2023, application for a two-lot subdivision at uh, 3675 Woodbine Avenue. Hamlet of Wantaw in the town of Hempstead's residential BB zoning district. Uh, this is a 22,048. Excuse me. Before you go further, Mr. Vanessa, maybe your client can meet with some of the neighbors outside and talk to them and share phone numbers. We're limited on what our jurisdiction here is, but during the construction process, I want you to be able to reach this gentleman, and I want him to be accountable to you. I want him to be respectful to you, and I want him to treat you fairly. Well, that's what I want you to Mr. talk about. <laughs> uh, that's what I want you to talk to him about outside. Uh, that's what I want you to talk to him about. We're on the next case. Bill. Mr. Mr. Chairman, this, my client is, is happy to speak to them. and Please take also, it outside. I would, I would just tell you that my client is a longtime builder in Nassau County, oh. very well respected. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a 22,048 square foot area subject property on the north side of Woodbine Avenue. Uh, application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 150 feet of frontage, into two separate parcels. Uh, lot A will have 75 feet of frontage at depth of 155 feet and be a total of 11,545 square feet. 
Lot B will also have 75 feet of frontage uh, and a depth of 140 feet, and will have a total area of 10,502 square feet. Uh, Town of Hampstead Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the application. Uh, here today representing the applicant, we have uh, Bill Benesso. Good morning again. William Benesso for Chelly Deegan Tirana, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Uniondale, New York. Here on behalf of the applicant, the applicant and builder is here this morning. Uh, you sure you don't want to be outside first? <laughs> I, was, I was never so happy to have a hearing right after this, my last hearing. <laughs> And the next hearing. <laughs> um, Mr. Cooperstein is here this morning. Uh, happily, I don't believe we have any opposition on this one. Uh, this is a property on the uh, north side of Woodbine Avenue. Um, the well, proper Bill, Bill, yes, sir. Uh, I, I have to recuse myself on this case. Okay. I, I didn't realize it. Not, not I was not. focused on the other cases and had my wrong glasses on. The. Uh, the property is situated in the residence BB district in the town of Hempstead, which is a little bit different from the residence B district. Lots are still required to have 55 feet of width, but they're required to have 8,000 square feet of lot area as opposed to 6,000 square feet. Be that as it may, this is a, a very large property, um, and the proposal is to basically change a lot line, but, it's, but it is actually formally a subdivision to turn tax lots 37 and 39 into two compliant buildable lots. Right now, tax lot 37 is 7,750 square feet. It does not comply with the 8,000 square foot requirement. Tax lot 39 is presently 14,298 square feet, much larger than need be. That lot line is basically being moved to create two more uniform lots. They will both be 75 feet wide, 20 feet wider than required by the code. And the parcel to the west will be 11,545 square feet. The parcel to the right or the east will be 10,502 square feet. These parcels will be uh, larger than 74% of the lots within the 200 foot radius. Um, and um, there are actually about 65% of the parcels in the 200 foot radius that are less in width as well. So these are over, these again are oversized parcels. They're fully compliant, require no variances, and we ask that the board grant the desired minor subdivision. Commissioners, any comments, questions? Is there anybody in the public that wishes to be heard? Not seeing any, I'll take a motion, please. I'll make a motion to uh, approve determination and application for minor subdivision in MCPC file 12-2023 with a negative declaration. I'll second. All those, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't go far. You're next again. Uh, next up is MCPC file 13 of 2023. This is an application for a three-lot subdivision. Uh, at 128 Cary Place in the incorporated village of Freeport. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Ron. Let's, okay. Yep. Boom, one sec. Yep. C Commissioner Allaby recused himself on a Freeport case as he customarily does. For the record, village of Freeport. Uh, this is located in the incorporated village of Freeport's uh, Marine Industrial Zoning District. It is a 17,390 square foot area subject property on the north side of Cary Place. Uh, property has 180 feet of frontage on Cary Place and will be subdivided into three separate parcels. Uh, proposed lot A will have 64 feet of frontage and be 5,948 square feet. Lot B will have 61 feet of frontage and be 5,910 square feet. And lot C will have 55 feet of frontage and be 5,530 square feet. The planning board for the incorporated village of Freeport granted subdivision approval at their meeting held on November 22nd, 2022, and there are no variances required at that time. Uh, this commission previously saw this application as a zoning referral at the February 17th, 2022 NCPC hearing where uh, they voted unanimously to issue a local determination. 
There is an existing home there that will remain on lot B uh, with two new propo proposed homes on lots A and C. Uh, uh, here today representing the applicant, we have uh, Bill Benesso. Going for the triple play here. Good morning. Yeah, you're, long, you're taking, time, long time no see. You're taking the place of Al or Chris on uh, monopolizing the agenda today, sir. But, uh, but usually I'm less controversial. <laughs> anyway. I like that you said usually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> After this morning, I have to say usually. Um, again, William Benesso for Chelly Deegan Tirana, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Uniondale, New York, here on behalf of the petitioner. Um, the petitioner would have been here this morning, but I got a call from him this morning that his wife took a fall, and uh, he's with her this morning at uh, a, a local hospital. But uh, be that as it may, the application before the board is for a village of Freeport property. It's within the incorporated village, and consequently the zoning jurisdiction pertain, uh, applies to the village of uh, Freeport. Uh, it was the village of Freeport that first granted a use variance for the project that is proposed here and then granted a subdivision to create the three fully conforming lots. Um, however, because the property is situated within 300 feet of the boundary line between the village and the unincorporated uh, areas of the town of Hempstead, the Nassau County Charter imposes dual jurisdiction uh, upon both the Village of Freeport uh, uh, Planning Board and the Nassau County Planning Commission. So that's why we're here today. Um, the proposal uh, and what was approved by the village in, in full is that the parcel, which is situated on the north side of Cary Place and backs up to Cary Canal, uh, it's, a, it's basically the largest lot on Cary Canal. Uh, it stretches um, approximately 100. Uh, 75 feet and it has uh, presently it's developed with a single family dwelling a legal non-conforming dwelling on the what is proposed to be the center lot on the uh, easterly lot there is basically nothing on there uh, other than bulkheading uh, that backs up to the canal and then on the westernmost lot there are two con storage containers and a garage the storage containers the garage uh, are going to be removed the sites are going to be completely cleaned, and they are going to build two single-family homes, one on either side of the existing single-family home, to remain. It will basically turn cha uh, change what it was a non-conforming commercial use because this is in the Marine Commercial District in the in the village. Uh, it, but nonetheless, almost the whole north side of Cary Place is developed with single-family homes. So this is doing away with a more intensive business or really industrial use on either side of that one single family house. It's going to keep the single family house and allow two lots for two single family houses to be constructed and those single family houses will not require variances based on the building envelopes that are applied to that. So again, as of right application, already approved by the Village of, of Freeport Zoning Board for the use variance because even though uh, it's changing it to residential. Residential isn't isn't uh, as right on the property, and and approved by the planning board for the village for the subdivision. So this is this would confirm the approval of the planning board, uh, the village planning board subdivision, and allow them to finally file deeds and get going on the work. So since um, there's a, you're within that 300 foot uh, uh, corridor that kicks in our jurisdiction. Are we going first, or is the village the village going last, or how they how the they village went first? They the village already first. heard the NASA, the um, the subdivision application and, and approved it. So, uh, so this is what it is. So, if we were to say, "Hey, let's move the lines," that would be a problem. Yeah, <laughs> we we also yeah. LD'd this back in um, yes. February of twenty two. Correct. When it went back, to, when right. it was going to the board, actually, you LD'd it twice. First for the use variance back when they got the use variance, and then for the subdivision at the NASA, at the uh, Freeport. Planning board, Any and of course questions? the house is staying in the middle. Of the house is staying; it's in good shape. I drove by there just the other day. It's in good shape. They're going to clean it up a bit, but uh, and then there'll be two new single-family houses. Thank you. Thank is you. Is there anybody in the public who wishes to be heard? Not seeing any. I will take a motion. Don't all jump at once. I'd like to make a motion to approve CCLA determination and 
an application for minor subdivision and CPC file number 13-2023 with a negative declaration. I'll second. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you for your patience this morning. Don't go too far. You're up again. <laughs> no, we got Christian up next. <laughs> uh, next up, we have uh, file number 14 of 2023. It's an application for a two-lot subdivision at 635 Jennings Avenue in the hamlet of West Hempstead in the town of Hempstead's residential B zoning district. Uh, this is a 16,000 square foot area subject property on the east side of Jennings Avenue. Application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 80 feet of frontage on Jennings, into two equal parcels. Both lot A and lot B will have 40 feet of frontage and a depth of 200 feet uh, and be a total of 8,000 square feet each. Town of Hempstead Board of Appeals approved the request for variances for lot A, subdivision of lot, front width from and on street line to front setback line, side yard aggregate, construct dwelling with garage and demolish the existing dwelling and detached garage, lot B, subdivision of lot, front width from and on street line to front setback line, side yard aggregate, and construct a dwelling with the garage. Uh, there are actually seven properties within 200 feet of this subject property that have uh, street frontages of 40 feet or less. Uh, here today representing the applicant, we have Chris Brown of McLaughlin and Stern. All right, good morning again, Chairman, members. Christian Brown, McLaughlin and Stern, 1122 Franklin Avenue, Garden City. Appearing on this minor subdivision, uh, these are uh, two oversized lots. Uh, they, they well exceed the minimum lot area. They needed vi variances for street frontage only. Those variances were granted. And otherwise, it's is a uh, 8,000 square foot lots, which is 2,000 square foot greater than is required, and we'd have two new single family homes here. Um, since the uh, frontage is, is a little tight with the 40 foot, uh, how does that impact um, on street parking and whether you have sufficient off street parking? Uh, both have uh, driveways <clears throat> on the side of the house um, and garages. Uh, the driveways should each be able to accommodate at least two cars. Because the lots are deep, so there's, the driveways are a bit longer. And if I remember that area correctly, Mr. Brown, a lot of substandard. Yes. In fact, it's rare that you find a, a, a house that's, uh, conform, that conforms to the code over that. Way. Yeah, this is an older area um, in West Hempstead. We've had a number of applications over the years similar to this where there are these, these narrower but deep lots. Uh, so um, a number of times we've, uh, I've been involved in it's similar cases right in this exact. Is that the Riding Academy with the yes, white? It's, yeah. It's next to the Riding yep. Academy. Yeah. yeah. It's haphazard in that area as far as conformity. Unless there are further questions, that's uh, the application. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? No. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to be heard? Not seeing any, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion for a CEQA determination and an application for minor subdivision NCPC file number 14-2023 with a negative declaration. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You too. Uh, just refresh my was 15 uh, was an adjournment date 15 set? was adjourned already okay thank you yep. was there anyone here who wanted to speak on 15 okay thank you we announced it no yeah I got an email from someone saying they were coming but uh, okay uh, next up is what's that oh. <laughs> next up is uh, 16 of 2023 uh, this is an application for a lot line adjustment at 2379 Gale Avenue in the hamlet of Baldwin in the town of Hempstead's residential B and business zoning district. Uh, this is a lot line adjustment with the Baldwin Fire Department as well. Uh, this is a 26,682 square foot area subject property on the east side of Gale Avenue and the south side of Prospect Street. 
Uh, the application is proposing to reapportion the properties by way of a land swap of approx approximately 2,112 square feet with the residential property at 2379 Gale Avenue, deeding that land to the Baldwin Fire Department. Uh, after this land swap, uh, proposed lot A, which is a residence, uh, will be a total of 10,000 square feet, and proposed lot B, which is the fire department, will be a total of 16,682 square feet. Tannaham said uh, Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed subdivision, and the application is considered as of right. Uh, you may remember this application as OSPAC 8 of 2020 when the county sold this excess land to the Baldwin Fire Department for them to utilize as parking space. Uh, here today representing the applicants, uh, we have Jeannie Shipman, uh, licensed real estate broker. Good morning, name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Chairman members. Um, my name is Jeannie Shipman, my address is 610 Brick Street, Belmore, New York, and I hear, I'm here representing the Belmore um, Baldwin Fire Department. As Mr. Hall has stated, they're just requiring a lot line adjustment, which makes them totally compliant with Town of Hempstead's um, apportionment. I don't really have anything to add. We've laid it out very well, so unless you have questions for me, that would be all. I said at the pre-meeting I'm familiar with the property. I've been there behind Baldwin headquarters, and uh, it's a good cleanup of that area. I'm sure the Baldwin Fire District would do a better job uh, in, uh, in cleaning it up than is present. That's their plan. Okay, commissioners, any other questions? No. Nope. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to be heard? Not seeing any, I will take a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve file 16-2023, negative declaration, property in Baldwin. Type 2. Type 2 action, I'm being corrected. <laughs> A program second? for negative. Second. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, last up, we have uh, 17 of 2023. Uh, this is an application for a two lot subdivision at 354 Bedford Avenue in the hamlet of Uniondale in the town of Hempstead's residential B zoning district. Uh, this is a 14,000 square foot area subject property situated on the west side of Bedford Avenue. Uh, this application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 140 feet of frontage on Bedford Avenue, into two equal parcels. Uh, both lot A and lot B will have 70 feet of frontage and a depth of 100 feet and be a total of 7,000 square feet each. Town of Hempstead Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance and the application is considered as of right. Here today, representing the applicants, we have Tom Abadi. Good morning, Counselor. Good Name morning. Not Bill record. Benesso, not Chris Brown. <laughs> Tom Obadi, ABVATE. I'm an attorney at 88 Sunnyside Boulevard in Plainview. Mr. Hessel did his usual thorough job. The subject premises is in that neighborhood west of Uniondale uh, Avenue, in between Front Street to the north and Jerusalem to the south. It's a neighborhood of well maintained houses and mixed architectural styles. And if you look at the radius, this is the single largest lot in the neighborhood. Um, the residence B allows lots not less than 6,000 square feet. Because we've got the 140 feet, feet of, 140 feet of frontage, we will have lots of over 7,000 square feet, so well in excess of that required. It does necessitate that we raise the existing structure because that will now straddle the new lot line. But both of the new houses which we propose will meet or exceed the Town of Henstead res Residence B front, rear, side yard setbacks, won't exceed the height requirement, and we will not exceed lot coverage. Unless you have any questions of me, I'm going to go to my office. <laughs> and, Thank prepare, you. and prepare for tonight's zoning case. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, uh, commissioners, you have any questions? Anybody in the public wish to be heard? Not seeing any, I'll take a motion. Take a motion to approve CEQA determination and an application for minor subdivision for NCPC file number 17-2023 with a negative declaration. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Go Bye. to your office. <laughs> Prepare. <laughs> All right. Now we're on to the uh, zoning agenda. Mr. Katz, we're just going to because you have to leave and I have to leave, we're gonna just entertain a motion uh, for local determination on agenda items one, two, three, five, six, seven. 
We reviewed them in the pre-meeting, and uh, those are the recommendations of the staff, and nobody had a contrary point. I'll make that motion. We have a motion made. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, case number four is the case that we're going to uh, want you to introduce. Okay. Because Case number four is NCPC case number 216223. This is town of uh, Oyster Bay, Hamlet of Hicksville, before the uh, Planning Commission uh, for site plan review. Um, this is a uh, proposed four-story mixed-use building containing 189 units and se about 7,600 square feet of ground floor uh, commercial space, some of which or most of which may be Restaurants includes uh, two levels of underground parking containing 344 spaces, 286 of which are uh, for the residential use and 55 spaces for the commercial use. Also includes a fitness center, outdoor pool, uh, private courtyards. Uh, property is bounded by Railroad Station Plaza to the north, Newbridge Road, New York State 106 to the west, Jerusalem Avenue to the east, Nelson Avenue to the southeast, Duffy Avenue to the south. The complex is literally steps away from the Hicksville Railroad, uh, Hicksville, uh, Railroad Station platform as well as nice, uh, nice bus routes, the what? public uh, bus provider. The applicant is proposing to set aside 10% or 19 units as uh, affordable. The subject property comprises 2.1 acres and is uh, currently occupied by a two-story office building, a large and deteriorating parking lot, and a two-story commercial building uh, that appears to be uh, vacant. Um, amenity space includes fitness center, outdoor pool, and private courtyard, as previously said. Um, the ground floor will feature public courtyards, diverse landscaping, several ground floor retail spaces along Nelson Avenue and Newbridge uh, Road. Can potentially activate the streets, streetscape with outdoor dining and, boot and, and shopping. Um, in 2017, TOB was the recipient of uh, $10 million in downtown re uh, revitalization DRI uh, initiative uh, funding to improve the vitality of downtown Hicksville. The funding supported the community planning process uh, where the community developed key ingredients need needed for successful downtown revitalization, which uh, were finalized in the Hicksville DRI strategic investment plan. Part of this implementation was the ad adoption of the Hicksville downtown HD zoning district regulations. Uh, the HD-1 uh, subdistrict in which the subject property is located within the downtown core district uh, permits uh, up to four stories in height. The intent of the HD-1 subdistrict is to allow TOD along primary roadways with a mix of uh, residential and non-residential uses and an active pedestrian environment around the Hicksville uh, Rail Station. A traffic analysis was prepared that projected a total of 49 weekday AM peak hour trips, six entering, 43 exiting, 28 weekday PM peak hour trips, 21 entering, seven exiting, 32 Saturday peak hour trips, 16 entering, 16 exiting. Um, the intersection capacity analysis in the transportation uh, in the traffic impact study shows that four study intersections will experience maybe some increase in delay, but the overall LOS will remain unchanged for the build versus no build uh, condition. The comprehensive analysis was prepared to examine the potential impacts of the proposed Sticker. action on transportation Sticker. resources in accordance with secret and town TICA requirements and industry standard practices. Uh, the Town Department of Environmental Resources concurs with the conclusions of the af applicant's traffic consultant that the proposed development will not have a significant impact on traffic operations of the adjacent roadway network or transportation resources which encompass the potential short-term, long-term, and cum cumulative impacts of the proposed action, as well as any potential direct or indirect secondary impacts. All significant impacts have been considered to have been adequately addressed. It is the consultant's opinion that a secret negative declaration with respect to transportation impact can be issued. The town's DER, Department of Environmental Resources, Resources concurs with the analysis prepared by the consultant and the town's consultant that the proposed development will not cause significant adverse environmental impacts as it pertain pertains to transportation resources in the town in accordance with secret secret standards. The town is uh, the town of Oyster Bay is a climate is a quote unquote climate smart community 
and as such, the project will include energy demand reduction and environmental sustainable features into the project design in a manner that uh, advances the town's smart uh, community uh, program Th goals. And uh, thank you very yeah, much, Mr. Katz. The staff Katz. recommends local determination with a letter. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Katz. We were, uh, also want to thank the applicant and the attorney who met with us at the pre-meeting to review this transformational project in Hicksville, finally get some development in a, uh, uh, in a lot that's been an eyesore in the community for many years. Uh, Commissioner Lewis would like to offer a... a uh, yes, thank you, uh, Commissioner. So for uh, case number four, local case, uh, NCPC case 216223, for our zoning referral, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we do a LD, local determination, with a letter, and the letter would um, support the fact that um, uh, there's really been an extensive planning process uh, that has been engaged with by the town and the community and the developer, um, that this uh, community engagement is focused on um, supporting efforts to really um, take advantage of the improvements in the train service to, with tra transit-oriented development, um, that the uh, work resulted in a strategic plan uh, first being adopted with that community engagement and uh, with the elected officials uh, supporting the strategic plan and then instituting a change in zoning um, and that after all that then in the site plan review we saw an extensive traffic analysis uh, energy conservation features so uh, I think that uh, the Planning Commission would like to um, include uh, LD with a letter so that the letter can point out that this was really a great example of the kind of planning that we need uh, more of on Long Island. And that there will also be the 10% set aside and um, they didn't overbuild it. They could have built more units, but they chose not to. I think if I'm not mistaken, 189 versus 20. So I think that's great that they took all that into consideration. And I'll second that uh, motion. Made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Good luck to the applicant. So carried. Unanimous. Yeah. Start, start digging. Okay, so um, the last... Um, I have an item of new business. Item on, on the agenda is um, under new business, and I'll turn it to... Um, the vice chair would like to read the okay. resolution into the record, and then and the then Commissioner the, Lewis has an amendment. That's correct. And we hopefully make the 12 noon. Okay, uh, the Nassau County Planning Commission is very concerned about the Governor Hochul's proposal. And our first resolution is Governor Hochul has included in her proposed New York State budget <clears throat> a housing compact plan. The second, the housing compact plan seeks to have all municipalities increase their housing units by 4% every three years. Third, if the growth threshold under the HCP is not met, the state can overrule a local zoning board that denies a developer's application for a new housing project. Fourth, the HCP does not take into an account the adverse effects that such development could have upon the environment, infrastructure, schools, services, traffic, and open space in Nassau County. Fifth, the HCPC is one size fits all proposal there are other impacts and unintended consequences of the proposal that need to be analyzed and studied rather than being rushed into as part of the budget process. And Commissioner Lewis has a sixth uh, amendment to include. I'd like to offer a friendly amendment. I, I agree with the, um, the concerns that the governor proposal really violates the concepts of home rule. Um, and this one size fits all is very concerning. Um, so with that said, I'd like to offer as a friendly amendment that we include the um, uh, six, the NAT NCPC, the Nassau County Planning Commission, recognizes the need for affordable workforce housing and has, when found appropriate, supported transit-oriented multifamily developments. The commission spent extensive time discussing this at the pre-meeting, and now uh, our newest commissioner, a village trustee in the village, is paying attention of, uh, of Massapequa Park, and we got to amend uh, the the uh, to three percent every three years. That she showed me for the governor's proposal. So uh, I accept the amendment of Commissioner Lewis, and I make the motion uh, for this resolution. 
and ask that it be uh, forwarded to the county executive, the county legislature, and the governor's office. Is there a second to I'll it? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous, thank, Unanimous. You. thank you. And also, let me, let me just say something. There's also something else that's in here, too, that all the members should understand. By 2030, you are no longer going to be able to build new construction using fossil fuels. Where are we going to get our power? We're going to be all electric? We don't have the infrastructure with the electricity now. Nevertheless, anything, you know, to use anything else. We're not going to burn wood as our heat. So what are we going to do? Huh? Absolutely. You're, you're saying it nicely. You're saying Motion it nicely. to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Dead off the record. do a better job than me. <laughs> right. I will talk to you. Be good, gang.